this lesson, we will explore the operation of addition in more depth, looking at common representations and algorithms. The concept of addition can be linked to cardinality of sets. Suppose we have two sets, A and B, and we know how many objects are in each set. What if we want to combine all of these objects together into one large set? Well, there are two objects in the first set, and one object in the second set, so in our union there will be three objects. In other words, the cardinality of A plus the cardinality of B is 2 plus 1, which is 3. That's exactly how many objects are in A union B. Provided that we think of each object as a unique object, this will always be true. And this is where the idea of addition is born. Addition is an operation that we can perform on two numbers. We call our two original numbers add-ins. We can model the add-ins concretely. For example, these unit blocks model the two add-ins, 3 and 2. The result of an addition is called the sum, and is found by counting up from 1. In our block model, the sum is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Addition has some nice properties that we will explore in the next chapter. Since addition is one of the building blocks of arithmetic, it's important that younger students spend a lot of time developing basic fact fluency. In other words, this means they should know fairly quickly any addition from 1 plus 1 all the way up to 9 plus 9. Many teachers use short quizzes to help foster fact fluency, taking answers up together as a class. And if done well, using group goals and positive reinforcement, this strategy can be an excellent one for teachers. Do be mindful that there are lots of other ways to practice basic facts through play. For instance, you should get creative with objects like dominoes, dice, and playing cards. What happens if we want to start adding multi-digit numbers, like 123 plus 111? First, it might be helpful to connect these to base 10 blocks. So I've modeled both add-ins over on the right-hand side. Now that we've modeled the add-ins, we can add similar blocks together. 3 units plus one more unit is 4 units. 2 tens plus another 10 is 3 tens. 100 plus another 100 is 200. So our total sum is 234. Now we can't expect our students to carry around base 10 blocks all the time, and we're eventually going to have add-ins that are too big to model with base 10 blocks anyway. So we need an algebraic way of writing down what we just saw, and we can do that starting with partial sums. If we line up the numbers representing similar block values, we add in the following way. 3 units plus 1 more unit is 4 units. 20 plus 10 is 30. And finally, 100 plus another 100 is 200. These three numbers are called our partial sums. And notice they're exactly one of the expanded forms of the number 234. Counting up on the number line is also a nice early strategy to use. Here, we begin with the larger blocks first and count in the following way. Well, I have one two hundreds, so I'm going to make two big jumps of size 100. So one jump to the number 100, and the second jump to the number 200. And then I have one, two, three tens, so making three smaller jumps of size 10 each gets us to 210, 220, 230. And finally, we have one, two, three, four units, so four very small jumps of a single unit each getting us to 231, 232, 233, 234. One of the big ideas is to connect any representation to place value. If we write our base 10 model into our place value charts, we can see the reasoning behind the vertical style of addition. It's relatively easy to keep track of how many of each type of block we have. Pulling away the place value charts gives us what is known as the standard algorithm for addition. It's a column by column algorithm that begins starting at the units. Basic addition facts are used to complete each column. 
and when we compare it to partial sums, it has fewer steps overall. One of the challenging parts of the standard algorithm, however, is the notion of regrouping. And regrouping is the reason why we tell our students to begin with the units first, since if we begin with the hundreds in this example, when we were to get to the units, we'd have 11 of them, and we can't use the symbol 11 in the ones place, so this forces us to go back and add one more step. However, if we begin at the units, and we notice that we have 11 of them, we can exchange 10 units for a tens block, and we carry this new block over to the tens column like this. Okay, so we have one new 10, and this leaves one unit as our remainder. And then the rest of the steps in this particular algorithm follow accordingly. One major thing to keep in mind when teaching addition is the idea that students need to eventually progress past drawing pictures or using concrete materials. Choose an algorithm, whether it's partial sums or the standard algorithm, that meets them at their current level. Also, as a teacher, you should know the benefits and drawbacks of using certain algorithms. For instance, some of the advantages of the partial sums method is that it can be done in either direction, either starting at the left or starting at the right. Partial sums is also fairly easy to connect to the number line model using specific jumps. And finally, it connects actual value to each one of the digits. So for example, a two in the tens place really means 20. And that's something that's potentially lost with the standard algorithm. Looking at advantages of the standard algorithm, it definitely has fewer steps than the partial sums method. Provided students are good with their basic facts, the standard algorithm tends to be a lot quicker than the partial sums due to the fewer steps. Overall, this makes the standard algorithm more efficient than the partial sums method. To end the lesson, let's work on a few examples. The first one we're going to look at is 3751 plus 476. We're going to model this addition using partial sums, as well as the number line. Alright, so starting off our partial sums, I'm going to start at the units. One unit plus six units is seven units. And then we have 50 plus 70 for 120. And then 700 plus 400 for 1,100. And finally, that 3,000 doesn't get added to any more thousands, so I'm going to bring that down to the bottom. And looking at the columns, we're going to have seven units, we're going to have 20, or two tens, two hundreds, and four thousands. How might we model this on the number line? Well, I'd probably start by making a big jump of 3,000. And then next, I'm going to start counting my hundreds. I'm going to count up to seven, and then three more is going to give me a new thousand. So I'm going to go past 4,000, and then one more jump of 100 will get me to 4,100. Something similar is going to happen for our tens. So we're going to start counting. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's going to get us to 4,200. But I have two more jumps left to do of size 10. That's going to get us to 4,220. And then finally, we have seven unit jumps to get us to 4,227. Finally, let's model the addition 677 plus 333 using the standard algorithm, as well as base 10 blocks. So first, let's set this up in a stacked fashion, and then we're going to model each one of our add-ins using base 10 blocks. Now the standard algorithm says I should start with the units, and that's in case I have any regrouping to do. So I'm going to add 7 plus 3, that's 10, so I need to regroup those 10 units. Those 10 units are going to give me a brand new 10 block. Notice that I have 0 units left over, so a 0 is going to go beneath the 7 and the 3, and I'm going to carry that 1 over into the 10s column. Okay, moving into the tens column, notice that we again have 7 plus 3 plus 1. That's going to give us 11. I need to regroup 10 of those tens, and that's going to give me a brand new hundreds block. So getting rid of those 10 tens, I see that I have one 10 left over as a remainder, 
and then ten tens have been regrouped to a new hundreds block. I'm going to put that one over top of the six. Okay, finally notice that we have ten hundreds blocks. So I need to regroup those into a brand new thousands block. Removing those ten hundreds, I see that I have zero hundreds left over, so I'm going to put a zero underneath the three, and I'm going to carry a one over into the thousands column. There's nothing else to add that thousand to, so I'm just going to bring it down for a final answer of 1,010. All right, my little epsilons, stay positive.